here in Longford where every week I meet someone from the local community who's doing something amazing to make Longford a better place for everyone to live and um, musicians who have travelled down to join us here on the show. This week I am joined by Dervla and Emily Considine ahead of the Cycle for Lark which is happening this Saturday in Longford Town and also a band called The Ascension Rising who have travelled from Kildare with one member from Longford to join me on the show. Guys, thanks for travelling all the way down from Kildare and Kian from Longford to, <laughs> to meet us here. Um, I was checking out your Facebook page, first of all, and congratulations on all the gigs that you've been playing in such a short space of time. Prosperous Music Festival, 96 over one in Cork, Gypsy Rose and Favour Music East in Dublin. It's fab. We were actually on Gypsy Rose. We're trying to keep up anyway. <laughs> yeah. And do you book the gigs yourselves or do you have, um, I know you've got such a big following at the moment, do people... Are you in demand, or how does it all work? Yeah, um, our manager actually works out all that stuff and, and is a savior for us. Super, <laughs> so you just have to worry about yeah. getting there and playing, yeah, and that's cool, that's great. Uh, and how do you find, again, I know you have a big fan base in America, and you know you do have a good following here. Is it much different when you're actually playing live gigs in front of people? I mean, the reception that you receive? Well, yeah, it's just as good. <laughs> Yeah, it's just as good. <laughs> you get a fantastic atmosphere at live gigs, whether it be like, you know, it's small intimate venues or bigger festival, you know, arenas, which is more attuned to the kind of rock star vibe, <laughs> you know. If you, you, but um, it's like you just get this great sense of joy and fulfillment when you're gigging live to people that are enjoying the music. Does that ever die? Like, no. <laughs> you get the same every time? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. I still get nervous getting up on stage, so that's a good sign. Yeah, nerves are like, it's a good sign. If you're not nervous, then you don't care anymore. Mm. Cool. And you're together quite a while now. Is it two or three years, or when did you actually? It's going up three years in the yeah. future. Yeah. And how did you all meet? Uh, Rob and myself went to school together, and we were in a band together. And uh, we, had, we just kind of gelled straight away. Um, and then... Keith and myself had mutual friends and we ended, ended up playing, playing together, together and, and uh, that, that had to keep happening and then uh, yeah, yeah, so that's how we met. So how do a rock and roll band from Kildare team up with a drummer from Longford? How did Kian meet up with you guys? Uh, he came very highly recommended from a drummer we know, uh, Phil Gaynor, who he runs his own kind of drum school and stuff like that. Um, and uh, we met up with him and he was actually the only drummer that came in completely honestly and said he only got the majority of the set as opposed to the rest of the auditionees that we had in so claiming they had everything perfect and you know letting us down there and through through the audition you know so he just sort of fit straight in like a jigsaw cool. piece you know and the rest is history mm -hmm. yeah. so soon after key and joined i know you toured america but that was not your first tour of america so do you want to tell me about the first one first the first tour uh we I'm not going to even try to remember where we flew into or where we went. <laughs> all all I say is that it was amazing. And uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's an entirely different world and it's very different. But I thoroughly enjoyed every insane roller coaster part of the tour. And likewise with the second one. It's quite incredible for a band that have only been together two, three years to have two American tours under their belt. How receptive? For the American audience too, and I was a rock band. Yeah, they were pretty receptive. What do you think? Yeah? I think um, I feel they're a lot more appreciated over over the pond. Um, they're just, just so much more, more in your face. face. Like they look more nasty. Like or, you know, like when they just start playing drums or they ask for your autograph and everything, mm -hmm. you, they just humble you a lot more. So yeah, I, I love the scene over in Ireland as well because you know that's where it all began. Like, yeah, but Irish people would be a little bit more hesitant about approaching people in general. Yeah, for American, they're like, oh my God, celebrities, yeah. I want to talk yeah. to you. you know, oh, we had all that, you know, going over, to, oh, they're Irish. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh, yeah, they love the Irish, so. 
I think we met more Irish people in America than we ever have in Ireland. So that's great. Well, that's nice that the Irish community over there are suppo supporting Irish music that's gone over. Yeah. So that's yeah. great. Um, how many, like, what did you do on the tour? How many venues did you play? Or do you remember where you went? Yeah, the last one was like, oh my God, what was it, like 24 gigs? Yeah. Something, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Something like something that, yeah. Crazy. Amazing. And we place like of six weeks. We had very little time off, but it was, it was way crazier than the first tour but it was so it was great it, it was, was absolutely great. worth it yeah what age are you yeah, I'm, t <laughs> I'm 21 wow i'm uh, 19 today oh oh yes i saw <laughs> facebook i meant to say i must wish her happy birthday <laughs> wow happy birthday <laughs> Kian? Well, Rob doesn't have a mic there. But it's equivalent to saying 17 and a half, man. <laughs> wow, so 19 to 21, that's um, incredible. So it's really just onwards and upwards from here, like 10 years' time. We can say we had them on the show. Yeah. So while Tour in America in itself is something amazing, you did hit the headlines for something really kind of, I don't even know how to describe it, that happened. Um, you were in a house fire. Um, so do you want to tell us? Yeah, um, on the second tour, just gone, um, we were just after finishing a show in Atlantic City and we went to stay with some friends and uh, it was this beautiful house, like over a hundred years old or something and <clears throat> they showed us like every room and we were like, oh my god, we're so lucky to be staying here, so excited and then uh, Keen woke me up like really early in the morning and he was like do you smell smoke and I was like um and then I kind of got my senses and I was like oh my god I do and then Keen woke up our manager and I woke up Keith and everybody just kind of snapped into gear there and then and then that's kind of how it went. And how many people were in the house? In total I think there was like um uh, 12, 13, 12, 13, 12, 13, 13 yeah. people. And everyone got outside? Yeah, a big yeah. four story house, and it was up under renovation, like, so we were lucky there was a smoke alarm in there to begin with. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was crazy, but, you know, it, the main thing is that everybody was okay in the end, and we were just happy and yeah. glad that everybody was all right. So. And how did something like that affect you, like, mentally? Did you lose, like, just a, it was, it was, a shock? It was pretty quick, like, it seemed pretty quick for the actual time it was that it took place. Like it was over like two hours, it felt like 10 minutes. Like, like we were, we were yeah. there for like over two hours and we were like watching the roof cave in and flames and everything and it was crazy. But uh, then we had to pack up and go mm. and travel to the next state and go and do another show. Wow, so how long more were you in the States after that? Well, it was coming near the end, wasn't it? Was it? Like it was the second, second time we were in Atlantic. Before. So it was like toward the end, um, we were actually, we, uh, we ended up doing a really good show after that, but we were all mm. so exhausted and we smelled like smoke and we just wanted to shower. Were you a bit fed up at that stage or did you just, did it give you kind of motivation to appreciate it? I was fed up because on? we got to the venue and it, it was so, it was so nice and I was so tired that I couldn't enjoy it at all, mm. like the, the gig afterwards and just so tired, just so wore out. Like you're trying to sleep in the van and then it's too hot. Like mm. you can't sit in the car because of the heat. The heat will kill you as well. It just so happened that that day it was really hot as well as yeah. the fire happening. It's like there. 90 degrees. So yeah, it was. It was that was crazy. But there's always something that happens on tour. There's always something, and that just ha so happened to be it. But yeah. you know, it may it was okay because everybody ended up being okay and everything happens for a reason. And you know, everybody's stronger from it. So. Good. Well, that's a really positive outlook. Uh, were you expecting the reception you got when you got home from all the media? That kind yeah. of exploded here. We had yeah. some, some sort of an inkling, but we had no idea the scale of it until we like came through baggage, like after getting yeah. the the suitcases and like uh, like my family was there and like there were signs up and there's people with cameras and there's people cheering and stuff like that and I was like I just wow. want I just want to like what we were saying we were saying we just wanted to roll. I was like <laughs> I just want to send a roll. <laughs> so yeah. So you can look forward to the day that they're all standing there screaming just for your music. Yeah. 
Oh, and then no. you'll yell to have a roll. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Um, so you are home a while now. Any plans for another American tour? Or are you just focusing on stuff here? We're focusing on writing at the minute and um, getting the next releases sorted. And it's, it's hard at the minute because like, we have people in the band working and you know, other things in life getting in the way and that kind of thing. So well, we're trucking along on it and yeah. hopefully we'll get, it, we'll get it done as soon as we can. Are, and are any of you in college or are you just going to stick with the music for a while and go back to college eventually? Um, I'm sticking at the music at yeah. the moment. I'm um, giving it another few years anyway <laughs> uh, before I t look at sort of settling down into actual like work and stuff and because I don't uh, don't want to waste the small amount of ha time I have as you know being young and being able to go and do these things and that kind of stuff so not That's everybody gets that experience exactly and what do your friends all think because they would have all be of college going age so it's quite a different thing that you're doing to the norm I don't know I, I I'm just assuming and I'm speaking for all of us when I say that they're probably all used to it by now yeah, yeah they're like over oh, like <laughs> They're really, they really are. Like they don't care. Anymore. Like other people <laughs> come up to like, whoa, can we get a picture with you? And the others. Are <laughs> yeah, they're just like, oh, okay. That's, that's <laughs> cool. But they must be really happy for you anyway. Oh god, yeah, they are. But like friends being friends, just to have none of it, you know? <laughs> yeah, they keep you down to earth. Anyway. That's it. Yeah, keep you humble. You seem great to other people, but to them, it's just noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't want to know about. It. So what about an album? I saw. Are you working on one? Yeah. We are. We're working on the album and I'm super excited. Brilliant. I'm super excited. Any release dates in mind or mm -hmm. just see what happens? No, it's still in kind of yeah. production stages. Is and is it much different from your older stuff or is it it's a a step kind up. of a grow, a grow phase? It's a I step up a little yeah, bit. I'd say it's more like established. <laughs> yeah, it's more, it's yeah. like a mature, more mature kind of vibe to it. Yeah. You know, yeah. while keeping the kind of live feel that we kept with the EP. Okay. Yeah. And was Keen on the EP? No, he wasn't, no. So it's cool to have... I can't wait to stick yeah. in, like, yeah. in, in a sound booth and get him recording because he's just going to make a show of a lot of people. <laughs> like <laughs> So modest. <laughs> Excellent. So what about in the next few weeks? Where can people catch you? Any gigs coming up? Well, later on, I'll be in some pub <laughs> here in Longford. You can all come down and have a few drinks. <laughs> oh, yeah, super. Cool. Wow. Well, that's it. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yeah. the Central usual, the usual everything, suspects. Everything. And you're going to play out the show tonight with an acoustic version of one of your weird songs. What is that called? Is Heaven Knows She's Tried. Heaven Oh She's Tried. No, Heaven Knows She's Heaven Tried. Knows she's yeah. tried. Yeah. Excellent. Guys, thanks very much for joining me and enjoy the birthday celebration. No problem. <laughs> Stay tuned to hear Descent and Rising playing Heaven Knows She's Tried, but up next, you can see our gig, gig guide and event guide of everything that's going on in Longford over the next few days.
that. Loads of great stuff happening in Longford over the next few days. As usual, you can join us here on the 11th of October at half past seven for our Making TV2 Remember course. Highly recommended. And this Saturday, the Cycle for Lark is on in Longford Town. And here to tell us all about it is Dervla and Emily Considine. Are you all set? We're all set. I think we're just about there. There's just a couple of um, things that can't be taken care of until the actual day of the cycle, but we're in pretty good shape, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cycle gear ready, oils chained, yeah. oil, oil <laughs> chained. <laughs> bike um, oils chained. Uh, not ours, but uh, <laughs> we'll be we'll be at the the, um, the working end of it where I won't be able to cycle this year because there will be so much to be done in the morning, and Emily will be. Um, Helping out on the ground, yeah. making the teas and coffees and making sure mm -hmm. everyone gets home. Yeah. Signing people in, registration <laughs> and and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you think they're mad cycling so far? Um, I think, yeah, I think they're good. Like they're, it's kind of you have the more like advanced cyclers, and then you have the ones that are just like doing it, you know, because they need to support charity, which is a great thing to see. But like, you know, there's no pressure on anybody. You take your time and. Um, just do the best you can and you'll finish. They're all very patient. Like. You might join them some year then. Yeah, maybe yeah, in the next year or yeah. two. Because there are, there are people, um, or there have been some children that have, have done it um, around Emily's age and, and younger and I believe will be doing it again this year. Excellent. Yeah, so, um, and if not both ways, they'll cycle it one way. They'll either cycle to Carrick and Shannon or they'll cycle back from Carrick and Shannon. So yeah, they come with their parents and uh, they do it, they like to do it, so. Brilliant, because it is a f like an all ages fun family event. Yes, yeah, it's not, it's not a race by any means. It's, um, it's a fun cycle. You will have all levels, um, advanced cyclists, keen cyclists, and there will be lots of people who will, for the first time, get on a bike this year because of this cycle. And you know, it'll take them that bit longer, but we have great support and um, help and um, we'll have um, a maintenance Kevin Martin will be doing the maintenance oh, we'll have a couple of vans so people want to cycle one way then they can hop in the car with some of us on the way back and their bike will be taken for them and um, we have help from the guards civil defense and um, Billy Behan and and the, the bikers the bikers um, Seamus, yeah, it says Seamus Kiernan and Civil Defence, Rose Kane and the Subacqua Club. People it really are is so an all Longford great. event. Oh, it it's really is. fab. People are so good. I mean, without, without all the support and help, we wouldn't be able to do this. How many years so. has it been running? I know this year is the first Lark cycle, but it was the MS cycle up until now. Yes, it was um, five years. Five years um, it was done for the MS centre in Sligo. Mm -hmm. um, our, my brother Eamon um, has MS and um, gets great benefit from the MS Centre in, in Respite, a um, new place in, in Sligo. And um, so it has been done uh, for them. We set a target uh, of initially €50,000, but um, we went further and we ended up raising over €100,000 over five years for the MS Centre. So that was our target. and. Um, this year we decided we would do it for the cancer support sanctuary that is Lark in Monty Farley. Because you and your family and yourself, Emily, and all of you have gotten great support from the Lark Centre. Do you want to tell me, Dervla, what mm. unfortunately you had to yeah. go through? <laughs> um, um, well, yes, in July 2014 I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, and um, which means secondaries really. It's, I had it in the breast and it went to my bones. And it was, it was a crazy, crazy uh, time. Uh, everything happened extremely fast with my illness. Within a matter of weeks, I was, after being diagnosed, I had surgery. And um, then I found out it had gone to my bones and things just went downhill, should we say, yes. for, for, for quite a while. And because I was so ill, you know, you can't, you, you can't stop and think about oh how you know this how this is going to work out this because you're, I was physically too ill, um, and of course our lives changed dramatically, dramatically very fast. Yes. Yeah. So you know for the girls for Emily and Rachel and Philippa obviously my husband also um, our lives were turned upside down, and for Rachel especially 
uh, she couldn't fully understand what was happening and I spent a long time in hospital. So I um, didn't see her for days on end and they had, it was their first day back at school. I was kept in hospital for weeks and I didn't come home that evening like I was supposed to and needless to say, she became full of anxiety and yeah. fear. And Emily, Emily became my nurse and became... <laughs> The rock. Oh, for a 10 year old, she was at the time. Wow. She, um, she did woman. one great job. Um, you know, whereas with Rachel, she was that bit younger. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but like, you know, then you have all the family and they're just great support. You know, uh, like my auntie Rosemary and then Nana and Grandad, they're, they're great, like, to just to talk to and everything. But then you kind of need a bit of the extra support, like, where Lark comes in. And that we just benefited from that like so much, which is great. And mm. they're all really friendly and yeah, it's just a lovely place to go to and talk. Sometimes you need that person who's not directly involved mm. with yeah, the family, yeah. just has no mm. connections that you can speak with. It was I mean, I had heard of Lark, but of course I you never would give it a huge amount of no, thought because we we didn't need to. Mm -hmm. Um and my sister Rosemary encouraged me to contact them because um you know, things where Rachel was, was kind of, in, she wasn't in a great place at all. And um, as you say, we were all a little... Shell um, shocked. Shell yeah. shocked. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, after my treatment, as my treatment started and, and things did settle down a little, but not with, with Rachel especially. So I did, I called one evening and um, for, the, for the kids really, not for myself. And I spoke to one of the, the women up there um, that I, I had never spoken to be, any of them before. And I think she had me on the phone for over a half hour talking and encouraging. And honestly, when I hung up the phone, I felt so much more optimistic about everything in relation to the kids. And, and the girls went up and after the first session in the Lark Centre with Audrey, through play therapy, the kids, um, I could see a change in them. Well, Rachel especially, because Emily was that bit more mature and understood better. But after one session, um, I could see Rachel starting to come out of that shell again. And, and over the course of a few months, um, every couple of weeks, the girls would go up and have an hour each there. And, and uh, they encouraged me to use it also, so I did. <laughs> I what, really did. At what age was Rachel? Actually? Rachel was eight, and Emily was ten at the time. Yeah. So what did so you get from it? Was it counselling? So what I, I mean, when, when the girls, things really improved with the girls, the, the staff there encouraged me, you know, to say, why don't you use all these services that we have? So I did, and I um, got one-on-one -on -one counselling, uh, reflexology. Lovely. Um, there are breast care services um, if needed. There are nurses on hand to answer questions if you, you know, it, because a lot of a lot of the medical stuff, when you initially are told it, it, a lot of it goes over your head because it's such a shock when you hear that word cancer. You don't you know, hear anything Things else. kind of just yeah. yeah. So um, so they were quite helpful as well. But um, really, I benefited mostly from the one-on-one -on -one counselling and um, the reflexology and just just um, the the place has has a real way of making you feel normal again which which is wonderful did yeah. you find that too and i think yeah she, they're yeah. just like so friendly and um you can get anything off your chest really anything that's worrying you because you know there's like no judgment whatsoever there mm -hmm. which is just a great thing was it easier to approach the nurses and the counselors than say talk to your mum or dad about stuff yeah well just like certain things you know you don't really want to worry them with all your things but at the same time like these people, they just they just listen to you, and I think it made Mam a lot happier knowing that we had somebody like to go and talk to about this stuff. You know, somebody that's like qualified and trained, which is good. And what happened during the play therapy? How does that work? Um, yeah, you sit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get you get some biscuits sometimes, <laughs> um, and you just like play games and talk and it's really laid back and really... I think you made a, a worry jar initially, didn't uh, you? Yeah. I think one of the things is where they create a worry jar. 
Right. And That's all right, yeah. you um, you put your worries into you it. You write out your worries yeah. and you and put your worries. And once they're in the jar, you lock them up and don't think and about you them. Leave them that. Yeah. I like that. And uh, I thought that was that was lovely. I read a thing once a long time ago when I was a teenager. If you get a stone and you put hold the stone real tight yeah. and you put all your worries into the stone and you throw the spiral away. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And uh, throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So don't throw it at anyone. You're angry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> These services, is there a cost or how are they funded? Um, well, 80, over 80% 80 of how, this, how the Lark Centre is funded comes through fundraising, donations. They do get small grants um, from the HSE or the government or I think the Irish Cancer Society might support them in a small way also. But um, they have an annual bun budget of I think close to about 280,000 euros is what it takes to run the centre every year. And 80% of that comes from fundraising. Wow. And um, I mean, you know, as my family have, have been fundraising for the last so many years and they also saw how much we benefited from it. And my brothers suggested then last year, listen, Let's do this for Lark, you know, We've now. Done and so much um, for yeah. it really, it really, I can't uh, express how, how, what a great place it is for anybody that's affected by cancer, be it a cancer uh, survivor or their children, their husbands, wives, partners. Um, they also do bereavement counselling up there. So, um, and, you know, it, it, and because it's it's um, it's only twenty minutes away from Longford, um, and a lot of people from Longford do do avail of its facilities, and it's it's the only place in the country that does like a retreat, where people come from all over Ireland to do like a two day re retreat, and um, like counties like of, of Cavan, Offaly, Westmeath, um, even Sligo, Leitrim. Longford um, people come from far and wide to use the services there and really uh, if what it does it it helps you emotionally and yeah. psychologically whereas you know thankfully I've come through the treatment and and the doctors and, and nurses in, in the hospital were wonderful and my treatment worked great for me but the emotional and psychological end of things if this there wasn't a service for Lark in, or yeah. like Lark you know, there's only so much doctors can do, and as yes. I said, and thankfully yes. you've come through. Yeah. But emotionally, that's a whole yeah. other thing, yeah. and for your yeah. family as well. So and I mean, it may not, for me, because as I said to you, I was so ill initially, I didn't have time to think about it. For a lot of people, it can take up to a year, mm. you know, to realise, wow, you know, I've, I've just been through this crazy illness, and my life has changed forever, and... Um, they can pick up the phone and they can call there and make an appointment or they can go and relax and just meet other people suffering you know, that have come through the same. And um, it's, it's just wonderful. I really, you know, I can't, can't stress enough what a great place it is. It's fantastic now that you're in the position to give back. Yes. A couple yeah. of weeks ago you did the art for Lark. Yeah. Which from what I read mm. in the paper went... Yes, it was a great success considering it was something that was foreign to us. Yes. But uh, Zita McGarry, uh, Kelly, she um, she was the one that suggested it and donated initially, donated a painting and suggested that we um, we do an auction. So we approached other artists and they were fan fantastic. Every artist, you know, straight away that we approached offered pieces and people that we actually didn't even approach oh. that came to us. And uh, anyways, we ended up... we. Um, we made 5,000, um, just over 5,000 euros. Excellent, for this. all going to that Lark. That was a once-off thing for, for Lark, so. Will you do it again next year, do you think, or the is art? it just? Mm -hmm. Probably not, but you know, I wouldn't not. rule it out. We may yeah. do something, but the cycle we hope to continue for. Excellent. For quite a while yet. So it is on this Saturday. Are you looking for volunteers? Um, or well, is it all covered? We, we, we do have some volunteers, but a lot will be down to the weather on the day, but we've always, like last year, we had 260 cyclists. So um, yeah. if anybody would like to come and help us out, absolutely. Um, we start registration at 9 o'clock in the rugby club in Longford, and um, there'll be tea and coffee and scones, and, and then the cyclists will all head off at half ten. 
um, get to Carrick and Shannon, there'll be more tea and coffee and sandwiches. <laughs> Cyclists love tea It's actually and really <laughs> about eating as well. The whole day is yeah. based on cycling and eating. Yes. And then back to Longford and there is a complimentary meal put on and people just hang out and, and chill out for a while and then Saturday night we night will out. The most important we have night. our social <laughs> night, we have our, our get together and um, and that's always also fun. in the rugby club. Also in the rugby and club. Can anyone come along, or absolutely. is it just for the cyclists? Or oh no, no, absolutely. Oh, come join people. us. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no. And you know, I th we we will have Sean Hussey entertaining us for yes. an hour or so, and then uh, Donald will be spinning some some discs. And, and is there a cost uh, into the night out, or is it no, no, no? It's no. Come no. along. Yeah. It's Give just a donation yeah. because yeah. Yeah. yeah, the people absolutely are more than we we will we won't refuse any donation. Yes. But, we'll encourage um, it. <laughs> um, but it's always a great night. Yes. Great night. You were so telling friendly. me before, yeah. It's just starting. like a really friendly atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lots of old faces. Well, yeah. for me, people that that you wouldn't have seen in quite a long time that will make make a point of coming and doing mm. it. And like Emily was at it last year and yeah. Uh, great enjoyed fun. it. Yeah, every two seconds, <laughs> stop to talk to someone new. <laughs> <laughs> so, Excellent. Uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to it. Brilliant. You know, so we if are. people want to learn more, it's Cycle for Lark on Facebook. Yep, Cycle for Lark. Can they register on the day? 30 euro? I think yes, you can. Um, we, we have sponsorship cards um, that are available um, from if you, if you go on Facebook, Cycle for Lark is the page. And our numbers will be on there. You can contact me and I will gladly give you a sponsorship card. And if you don't have a sponsorship card, it's 30 euros uh, at registration. I mean, everybody must register. But those that don't have um, uh, sponsorship cards will pay a one-off 30 euros. Excellent. And that will include, you know, um, obviously the cycle. Um, and all the teas Breakfast, and lunch and, and dinner. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> sure you can yeah. get it anywhere else. Yeah. So and one last thing, actually, if people don't feel like cycling all the way to Carrick and back, I know they could cycle there or, or get a lift back. But is there a smaller route or is it to Carrick? It's, it's and if you want yeah. to get a lift back. Yeah. You can, you, if you decide you only want to do it one way, you can decide either you can do it um, down to Carrick from, from Longford Rugby Club to Carrick and Shannon and your bike will be transported back for you and you'll have a lift or else you can get a lift to Carrick and cycle back to Longford. Yeah. Excellent. But, but uh, there's like no pressure on you, you take no, your time. No, no. Cause and we have stewards. Yeah, you know, so up much support. Yeah. You surely earn your Everybody, uh, yeah. You know, it's, as you say, it's not a race. Yeah. Everybody is having fun and taking it at their own pace. Some will do it in an hour, some will do it in two or three hours. So yeah. that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Brilliant. The dinner will still be there when they get back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks so much for joining me and just your inspiration on the two of you. I don't oh, think you know how much, much you are. So thanks a million. Thanks at home, everyone, for watching. And please do check out Cycle for Lark on Facebook. If you can volunteer your time, do the cycle or even just make a donation, you can check them out on Facebook or go to the Rugby Club this Saturday at 9 a.m. Thanks for watching. You can catch us again next week on Out to Take Community Media YouTube channel and on Cablecom Channel 9. <laughs>
Thank you.